the difference between this score and yeah. the work you've done before is, yeah. is pretty big. It's pretty different. What? What? Uh, how did you get to that point to make that sound? Well, so so Ryan and I are cousins. We, we grew up working together, and it, the thing that's really great about working on a Ryan movie is that we start really early in the process. Um, you know, often composers come in like right at the very end, and they've got like a couple months to turn it around. But for Looper, I worked on it for over a year, and um, and we were talking about what the sound should be like before they started shooting. So, yeah, it was cool. it was really cool. And so, so here's here's what it was. It it it's a big action movie, but it's like very left of. It's not what you'd expect. No. And, um, so Ryan and I were talking about how do we how do we make a big sounding movie, but not your traditional big action movie score. And. The doorway that we kind of walked through to get there was the idea of gathering found sounds and then creating instruments out of those. Right. So I actually went down to New Orleans while they were shooting the movie and I just lived down there. And I would just wander around on set, wander around the city, just gathering all these different, wow, gathering all these different industrial fans and treadmills and basically just like recording the sounds of a city. And then, uh, yeah, and then I took those sounds and brought my team on and we began taking all of those and turning them into playable instruments. That's cool because, I mean, this, watching the movie, I, I don't think I, I noticed that. Yeah. I mean, it's very seamless and yet the sound is very different. The same yeah, sound. yeah, and we, you know, we use orchestral elements, but right. it's all sort of anchored in this really, like, sound of a city falling apart um, and those turn into the rhythms that you hear and you know it's like car doors slamming or the right. big kettle drums and that's amazing yeah yeah so it was it was something that i've never done before and kind of you end up like walking down a rabbit hole and right. getting you know getting lost and then getting found and <laughs> in terms otherwise of influence did you have anyone that you took influences from to make this yeah score? i mean it like Really, Ben Burt from from the original Star Wars movie, the sound wow. designer. Yeah. That was, you know, and it's it's so fun to take an influence from someone who's not a composer, right. and and kind of see where that takes you. So, yeah, I mean, just like looking back on how he did that, and, and just yeah. like the ingenuity that they that they used to and kind of create those. And most people don't know about. It. Yeah. Most right. people don't understand. I mean, what was it? There's an elephant noise used. For yeah, it's, and he would like combine different animals yeah. together with like machines and. Yeah, so it was it was amazing and it, and really fun too to like step out of the world of like what instrument am I going to use and, and really think more about it in terms of what sound should we use. Um, yeah, yeah, really, really like a different headspace to be in in terms of composing. In terms of scenes, was there a particular scene that gave you the most trouble? Wow. Um, you know, I can't think of one off the bat that gave me trouble, but I'll tell you this, the story of how the very first scene I did. Um, because usually, again, this was totally different too. Like, usually when I start on a movie, you watch the whole thing, you spend time talking about it, you spot it, work on themes, and then, like, expand those into the movie. And um, Ryan actually called me and he's like, hey man, uh, we're editing, we're having trouble finding temp music for a couple scenes, would you mind if I just... Would you, would you mind if I just sent you these scenes and just take a stab at it? And this is before we talked themes, before we talked anything. So I basically just sat down with the time machine scene and um, and started making instruments out of out of these sounds that I gathered. And yeah, that was like my That's first cool. story. And it felt like really unsettling because I didn't have the whole overview. It was like jumping right in the deep end. And was there stuff from that that you ended up using in the final that, thing? Like that first thing I did is almost exactly what's in the final really? thing. Yeah, wow. we like sweetened it a little bit and added a bit of strings, but that one is almost only industrial sounds um, transformed. That's amazing. Like, yeah, so it felt it felt really cool. Like that that instinctive moment was right. like right. And when when Ryan, you know, fed back to me, he was like. All right, you've got sound. This is like this is what it sounds like. Wow. Yeah. That so must be rewarding. It, it was. Yeah. It was like okay. I don't know what I'm doing, but good, good. Cool. We'll we'll follow that road. We'll follow that road into the dark. So going forward, are there 
Is there a type of film you'd like to score or something you'd like to do that would push you even further in a new direction? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I would love, it, like this was such a an atmospheric score, I would love to, to like jump totally in the opposite direction and do something super melodic. As well, it would be cool to do something like really sparse as well. I don't know, I'm just thinking like, jumping off from a different place from like a super dense thing so that's cool yeah yeah awesome well otherwise that do you have something coming up immediately next or something I've got a couple I've got a couple things I'm working on now none that I can like talk about right. yet but they're uh, yeah I'm really excited about about the next couple projects cool yeah thank you very yeah, much yeah totally man thanks Amazing so much for film. talking thank Love you it. thanks a lot <laughs>